Hello and welcome to another edition of Espresso Jams, Entrepreneurial Journeys. Today I have with us Adina Legland and she is a registered nurse and a certified coach and her clients have actually given her a name. They call her the Inner Warrior. Welcome to the show, Dina. Thank you, Joe. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here. We, we've known each other. We've seen each other around in circles, and it's, it's great to finally have you on the show. Yes. Yes. It's, it is amazing on how these circles come, you know, it comes full circle, I should say, and how you start to meet people. And, and next thing you know it, you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's on a podcast, virtual coffee chat. It's amazing to connect all over the world today. It really is. And it's, it's all about engagement and conversation and connecting with people. Yes. So where do you hail from today, Dina? I live in Southern Florida. Um, I moved here. This coming August is going to be two years. But I joke around about the way that I talk because every time I tell people I'm from Southern Florida, they go, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually born and raised on Long Island, New York. Oh, <laughs> not surprising. Yes, I, you have not lost much of your accent. No, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Super duper. And... So as a certified coach and registered nurse, you're listening to Espresso Jam, short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, technology, and entrepreneurship. If you're just starting out on your business adventure or you're a seasoned business professional, I'm sure you'll find value in these short conversations. Espresso Jams is brought to you by Apexable, providing the tools, insights, and transformative structures to help you reach your business summit. I'm your host, Joe Matz. Let's get started. Um, but now you have your own business. Did you, did you always have intention to have your own business? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say it that way was because I, can, I grew up in a family that, it, that we owned our own business. And I shouldn't say we. My grandmother started her own business. My grandfather started his own business. My other grandfather had a business. And then my dad and my uncles, they were all in the family business. And it was tough growing up with family business. What, what, what kind of business was it? Uh, my grandmother owned her own dress factory. My grandfather owned his own gas station. And then my father and my uncles ended up in the auto parts business. And my other grandfather had his own hair salon. So very different businesses from all, <laughs> all over. Yeah. Yes. So yes. It, it almost sounds like having your own business is in your DNA. Yes and no. Um, there's, a, there's a phrase that uh, money is the root of all evil, which I believe and I don't believe. Um, it's ironic on how I watched the family have some family issues. But as the years went on, of course, everything works out. And I kept saying to myself, I will never own my own business. Mm -mm, not doing it. My sister, my brother, all three of us did diff different things, to be honest with you. We, di we didn't do anything with the family business huh. at all. <laughs> okay. I guess, you know, growing up with so many family businesses, and if you see a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs work really hard. Oh, and, yes. And all the time. And oftentimes the, the family, we know the family gets sacrificed because of that personal life, personal health gets sacrificed yes. because of that. And if you live in, if you grow up in that kind of environment, it's, it makes it very difficult to say, hey, that's what I want to do. Yeah. yeah and that's what, that's what truly happened. My mom was a stay at home mom and my dad would leave the house at 7 a.m. and wouldn't come back till 7 p.m. or I don't even know. And worked seven days a week, practically. And you're correct about that. It was tough growing up in that kind of environment. Um, but like I said, things come full circle. And when I had my children, my dad was like, oh, no, I get to play. I get to do this with the kid, the grandkids. I was like, wait a second. Is this the same dad? <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. So 
So you grew up then, you you didn't want to have your own business. You you mm-hmm. wanted to get a job? Yes. I'm, I actually knew that I would say when I was about five years old, I knew I wanted to take care of people. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister was born at that point. I was five. She was born. I used to take care of the baby. I was the mama, not my mother. <laughs> Anybody went near the baby, I would yell at them. Okay. Uh, I took care of the kids in the neighborhood that skinned their knees. I would be cleaning them up, putting Band-Aids on them. And as I was growing up, I was fascinated with ambulances. So I would make, if I was in the car or the truck with my dad, I'd make him go follow the ambulance. And in my head, I was wondering what happened if they got, if they got hurt, how was I going to take care of them? And my dad turned around and said to me, you really need to go into the health field And I ended up going to college and graduating as a registered nurse. Okay. Well, that makes perfect sense. There was some (laughs) orientation in that direction from a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also, because of that EMT ambulance chasing thing that I was doing, I also became an, an EMT for the local fire department where I lived for almost 30 years as well. Oh, so did you drive around in the fire truck or the EMT trucks and... I would drive the ambulance. I would take care of people in the back or I would drive the ambulances. And and we had, I've seen a lot of different things and I I served my community because that's what I did. I rode the ambulance in my community. Was it anything like the TV shows we see about the (laughs) like ambulance 103 or whatever it might be? (laughs) No. (laughs) I kind of thought you would say that. Same thing with any kind of hospital show. If I, you know, if I was watching TV with my kids and my husband, they they would say, "Okay, ma, don't criticize the nurses, don't criticize <laughs> the doctors, don't stop with the EMT stuff. We know that it's different." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, that's great, funny. Yes, very funny. So, so how long were you doing that in, in as a nurse or as a? EMT? I was a nurse. Well, I'm actually still a nurse because I hold both my licenses. I still hold my New York license and I also hold my Florida license um, because I work with a wellness center back in New York that I am his wellness nurse. So I see his patients virtually okay, uh, one day a week. And I always felt that I should always hold my nursing license. It's just something that I, I believe in. Yeah. But I actually retired really from nursing and working in hospitals or the college that I was working at or the doctor's offices. I've had many different jobs. The majority of my nursing career was in home care. Yeah. And I ran the gamut of being a field nurse, a field supervisor, in-house supervisor, all the way up to a director of a home care agency. And I truly decided to figure out what my next step was right before COVID hit. Right before COVID. Wow. What, right. What was, the, what was the inspiration for that? Did something happen? Was it internal? Was it external? There were many different, many different reasons. Uh, after being a nurse for, at that point, it was like 32 years. I was like, okay. <laughs> I want to do something different. Uh, But I also had two life altering experiences that made me realize that I wanted to go into a different direction. And that's when I became a certified health and life coach. My first experience was back in 2010, I had lost over a hundred pounds. My mom was sick. My grandmother had passed away. Everybody in the family had some kind of illness and I was very overweight. And I said, I don't want to end up like the rest of the family. So it took me about a year to lose 110 pounds. And my mom had passed away at the end of that year. And then exactly six years later, I got diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer. And I handled it. I had a year of chemo. I've had multiple surgeries. I had a bilateral mastectomy. And I said, there's more, there's more here. There's more for me to do here. And I decided in during that breast cancer journey is when I really started. And I said, I want to help people get healthy. 
So that's when I started my, my certifications for health coaching. And then as I got through the breast cancer journey, I said one day out loud, cancer saved my life and my other fears almost killed me. And people were like, what, what are you talking about? And that's when I knew I needed to do this part of my life. I knew that that was the pivoting point. And I said, my fears, my, I really realized that my fears was really about not being loved and being judged during my cancer journey. Cause I had to take care of myself first right, and sure. not be the caregiver, not be the nurse, not be the EMT, not be the, the, the college professor. Cause at that time I was working in the college that I graduated nursing school from. Yeah, and and um, that's a, that's a difficult switch. I've heard from many people. If you are the caregiver and then you are the one who needs care and that can be a difficult switch because it's, a, it's a whole, your, your internal view, your internal perspective of yourself is that of giving care, not one who receives care and who needs care. Right. And, you know, I realized with working with clients that the fears really stemmed back from either a trauma or childhood and then add a life altering situation on top of that or a fatal diagnosis on top of that. And what I discovered was the tools and the strategies to get through that and really d dig deep down in my inner core and find what those fears were. And that's what I truly help women today do. And I do help men as well. My passion is helping people in remission from their cancer because we are just like, okay, now what do we do? Careers have changed, jobs can change, we have changed, not only physically, mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I, I focus on is causes and effects mm -hmm. or symptoms, if you will. And it's almost like the iceberg in the water, whereas the 10% that you see is above the water and the 90% is below. The 90% could be the cause. And what right. you see is what comes uh, over the surface. Exactly. So when, when you're dealing with people in the in remission, what are some of the symptoms that are visible and what are some of the causes that are creating those symptoms? Would you like to get in front of more of your ideal clients and at the same time, build your brand and create evergreen content? Well, you can do that with podcast guesting. This very moment, you're listening to a podcast that may have been published today or three weeks ago or three years ago. In a very real sense, you're engaging with the speakers, hopefully enjoying yourself and learning something new at the same time. And you're getting to know the guests and how they help their clients, their customers, and the problems that they solve. You may even be their ideal client and want to learn more about them and download one of their free resources you can find in the show notes or maybe even become a client of theirs. See, when you're a guest on a podcast, you will enjoy that same kind of engagement. It is perhaps the easiest, most cost-effective way to get in front of new audiences. Learn how you can be a guest on the right podcast and engage with your ideal clients with the free resources available at gapologist.com. Well, I do it. I would say that, first of all, someone has to truly identify what they're most afraid of. So they really have to figure out how to be free from those fears. So it's like uncovering the layers of the onion. Hmm. And an example of this is I worked with one client who was so afraid of taking this drug that we take when we're in remission. And as we were peeling back the layers of the onion, we discovered, I discovered how anxious she was and she suffered from anxiety. And she suffered from anxiety since she was like 15 or 16 years old. 
And that's what we discovered. We discovered that the true fear is really not the medication. It was the anxiety she had to drive, to go to doctors, to go back to work. So here we are just thinking about a medication when the, the fear is all about the anxiety and how am I going to move forward when I'm so anxious about things? Right. It's, it's the thinking about and it's the know, mindset, it's your <laughs> mindset. Yes. And, and for my nerdy friends, I'd like to bring up Luke Skywalker and Yoda when Yoda made him go into the cave to face his fears. He had to get over that. That, that was for my nerdy friends. Hey, that's okay. My husband watched all of those and Star Trek and everything else. You name it. <laughs> that's great. I love it. I love the analogies. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's a great example of, of what you see as a symptom, but it's not the cause. And, and a lot of people, they would go after that symptom. Oh, right. the drug that's what is we not do. that bad. The drug is this. The drug is that. And, and all of that stuff. And not get to the cause. So I love how you, you get to the actual cause. Right. And once, once we get to the cause, then we can use certain tools and strategies to overcome them. I'm, I actually asked this woman, when were you happy? When did you realize that the anxiety was taking over? And right before you realized it, because she said she was about 16 or 17, I said, can you think of a time when nothing bothered you? And she goes, yes. When I used to drive to the country to see my grandmother with the windows down, the radio on, I said, by any chance, do you have a picture of that? And she said, of course I do. I said, what I want you to do is put it on your computer screen or hang it somewhere where you always see it. And that was one of the visual tools that she used to get through the when she became anxious. And there were other many, there's many other tools that we used. Um, there was um, actually journaling, mm -hmm. um, self-positive talk, affirmations, yep. you know, and the, all the physical things like, eating healthy, exercising, you know, meditation, all of those kinds of things too, but there's just some other tools. And she realized that she could do this. Like she would drive a couple of miles and be okay. And then drive a few more miles and be okay. And then she was driving herself to the doctor's office. And then finally she went back to work, you know, and the bottom line is, which I tell everyone is that the fears don't go away completely, but you now know how to face them with the right tools, the right mindset, and you move through it quicker. Whereas sometimes that those fears will just paralyze somebody and they do nothing for months to months to months to years to years and years. Right. Now, I've, I've even spoken with people who have not been to the doctor for their yearly checkup because they don't want to know if something is wrong. I'm like, oh man, that's that's not the way to go. <laughs> no, unfortunately that isn't the way to go, but no. people have that fear. And the bottom line is what's causing that fear? Yeah. That, Let's that, identify the fear and then take it further and find out what the cause is. Now with me, when I say I've, I, I felt that I would be judged and not loved, is because through childhood, I was always teased. I looked different. Okay, I acted different. I acted like a tomboy. I'm a girl, but I acted like a tomboy because I had an older brother. And I was teased a lot for being sensitive. And, you know, I had relationships, friendships that would come and go. And I would always say, what's wrong with me? Why, why, why is this happening? And then getting diagnosed, I was just like, Oh no, it's starting all over again. And I found these tools to use to get through it. Yeah. You know. And there's a lot of tools that you mentioned. I I use some of those tools myself. I'm I'm a meditator. Um Fantastic. I eat healthy, I exercise, I use affirmations and visualization also. I I love the idea of the the woman driving in the car with the windows down and the music <laughs> playing in the country beautiful and i i've got my own images that i use and 
I think sometimes people call that the happy place. Go to your happy place. And, mm-hmm. and if you have a happy place in your mind where you can kind of take a, a little vacation, even if it's yes. two minutes or three minutes, to recenter yourself, to get back to where you are. And it's good at any time if you have a medical condition or a mental condition. I've been accused of that. Or um, not. Yeah. If you're just stressed. That's right. The kids That's are right. driving you crazy. The husband or the wife might be, you know, nagging you to do something. Or you're like, oh, j- your job, you got a deadline. Yeah. Like, yes, I talk about helping women and men in remission. But fear is fear. It never changes. It's whatever. It's how you perceive it and how you deal with it. And it could be absolutely anything. And I try to emphasize to people, it doesn't have to be this big major thing. It could be just a little small thing that affects you internally. Right. Yeah. So if someone is experiencing the symptoms that are caused by the fear, how do you get to the cause without, um, without the fight or flight reaction from the individual? It's actually having, like you said in the beginning of this, this is a conversation, right? So I have what I call a conversation during my sessions. And I literally ask thought provoking questions that it's not a yes or no answer. They have to stop and think about it. And what I do is I have learned through my coaching technique to ask these questions and then reframe it in a way, but it's their words. I just kind of reframe it a little bit, but it's their, it's their words. And they were like, Hmm, I just said that. Oh my goodness. You know? And, uh, and I say, this is what I heard you say. Yes. That's and I then they're like, that. wow, that makes a lot of sense. Hmm. You know? And we also go through, positive reinforcement, or I always ask, let's celebrate something. What's a win, no matter how small, whether it's personal business, it doesn't matter what it is. And at the end of my sessions with my clients is what's, what is one step you can take during the next week that'll get you closer to the goal that we set in the beginning? Because we want forward movement with our clients and that's that's why they come to us and they come to you so they can have forward movement and act and you know i've always heard that um courage is is not acting without fear courage is acting even though you have fear right absolutely (laughs) but if, if we can limit that fear and find the root cause i think that's sounds like a big help in diminishing the effect that the fear has on someone moving forward. Exactly. You know, I always, you know, they break down the word fear of uh, false evidence appearing real. Yes. And, And there's other ones out there as well, but I take fear and I, and, and I always say feeling excited and ready. Mm or whatever opportunity comes your way, you know, it's really just flipping the switch and looking at whatever obstacle and saying to yourself, okay, how am I going to move through this? What is it? What's the cause of it? How am I going to move through it? So I can feel excited and ready about whatever I'm going, whatever journey I'm on. Right. And sometimes it's, it's so important to have someone who can listen to you without any agenda, let's say, as a a coach should be, without any agenda, just helping the person get through, being a witness, being a listener, and reframing, and reframing back to the person what they're saying. Because sometimes we'll say things, and a question that goes deeper into what we say really makes us think of, now, where did that come from? Exactly. And although you can do it on your own, it's very difficult. Yes. <laughs> very difficult. I, you know, even coaches need coaches. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. I've had my, I've had my share. <laughs> yes. So have I. Yes. Yeah, that's great. And, 
And Dina, you've got some exciting things coming up here in, in the very near future. Yes, I do. Um, actually, I have with a dear friend of mine, Maggie Judge, we are launching our podcast called Heal Inside and Out, Real and Raw in Breast Cancer on March 31st. And we are going to talk about all the things that a lot of people don't want to talk about, all those ta taboo issues. Um, we just want to create an amazing community. And I actually am waiting. I wrote a chapter in three different books. I don't know exactly when they're going to be launching. They were supposed to be launching by the end of first quarter, but I think we have a I think we have a little bit of delay. It might be the second quarter. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll be looking for when that comes out. Yes. That yes. is that's I've been uh waiting to to find out exact dates. So, so I can, you know, spread the word. <laughs> right. Of course. Yeah, that's great. And, and the podcast is exciting. I know it's, um, it's a lot of work and it's, it's exciting. And there's so much to be said about what yes. you talk about. So that's I'm great. also involved in a group that I started with three other women. We just started talking just to support each other. Three of us have our breast cancer survivors and the other one, uh, works with women who've had mastectomies. She's a, a uh, massage therapist. And we just started talking one day over a year ago. And then we decided to come together and form a group called the Breast Connection Prevention Plus Healing. And we meet on Zoom once a month, the second Tuesday of the month. And it's just amazing. It's really about breast health you don't have to be a breast cancer survivor or going through the process, you know, any kind of, you know, breast surgery actually as well. So that community is growing as well. Okay. So we'll have links to all of that in the show notes. Yes. Yeah. Super. Yes. And for our listeners today, do you have anything special for them? Yes, I do. I have a complimentary, what I call Conquer Your Fear Discovery Session. And the way that you can get in touch with me to schedule that is you can go to my website, wellnesswarriorsforlife.com. And there's a link, there's a button there that you can just schedule that um, session with me. And I would be honored to have a conversation with anybody listening to this podcast. Super, super. And that what is that website one more time? wellnesswarriorsforlife.com. And also you can email me at dina at wellnesswarriorsforlife.com. And it's all spelled out. <laughs> it's all spelled out. Okay. No yeah. spaces, no spaces, no, no, spaces, no, no numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And is that the best way to get in touch with you if someone wants to know more about you? Yes. The website is great. Um, there's a page where you can put in some information and contact me. Um, I love, e you know, emailing me. I am also on LinkedIn, Dina Legland. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, Wellness Warriors for Life. Super. Very good. And I'd encourage everyone listening here, if, if, if Dina touched you in some way, reach out to her. She's, she's just a nice person. Have a great <laughs> thank <conversation>. you <laughs> thank well, you joe i appreciate your kind words thank you for being on the show and sharing your your wisdom and your knowledge with with the listeners thank you, thank you. it was bye. a pleasure bye bye now bye thank you for listening to espresso jams if you like what you heard please subscribe on your preferred channel never miss another episode if you'd like more business tips on technology, entrepreneurship, and doing better, you can find me on LinkedIn at Joe Matz, that's J-O-E-M-A-T-Z, or go to my website, apexable.com, that's apex-able.com. I'm your host, Joe Matz, wishing you an awesome day.